हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर डी वी प्रसाद फ्रॉम इंदिरा गांधी नेशनल ट्राइबल यूनिवर्सिटी अमरकंटक टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल ऑटोंगस पीपलिंग ऑफ इंडिया फ्रॉम पेपर इंडियन एंथ्रोपोलॉजी सो द स्टूडेंट इन दिस मॉड्यूल यू शैल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंडिजिनियस कम्युनिटी ऑटोंगस ऑफ इंडिया you will develop a clear insight on the peopling of india project you will know the view of different scholars and the aboriginal status of tribes in addition to this you would understand the debate and discussion over the atangton status of tribes in india then indigenous people are those groups especially protected in international or national legislation as having a set of specific rights based on their historical ties to a particular territory and their cultural historical distinctiveness from other population the legislation is based on the conclusion that certain indigenous people are vulnerable to exploitation and marginalization and oppression by nation states formed from colonizing population or by political dominant different ethnic groups indigenous peoples can also be described as those which have a historical continuity with their pre invasion and pre colonial societies that developed on their territories consider themselves distinct from other sectors of societies now prevailing in those territories are parts of them they are determined to preserve develop and transmit to future generation their ancestral territories and their ethnic identity indian society is marked considerably heterogeneity in terms of ethnic cultural diversity and has therefore perceiving in terms of more in terms of differences than similarities the major social categories in which the differences have been perceived as religion territory language and caste these categories were reinforced during british rule through the decennial enumeration and classification of the population into groups and categories one of the major intellectual and administrative preoccupation of the colonial state anthropological survey of india conducted the people of india project which enumerated 461 tribal communities of which 174 have been identified as subgroups the 67.7 million people belonging to scheduled tribe in india are generally considered to be adivasi literally meaning indigenous people or original inhabitants though the term scheduled tribe that is st is not coterminous with the term adivasi scheduled tribe is an administrative term used for the purpose of administrating certain specific constitutional privileges protection and benefits for specific section of people historically considered disadvantages and backward however this administrative term does not exactly match all the people called adivasi out of the 5653 distinct communities in india 635 are considered to be tribes or adivasis in comparison one finds that estimated number of sts varies from 250 to 593 for practical purposes the united nations and multilateral agencies generally consider the sts as indigenous people with the st population making up 8.8% of the total population of india it is the nation with the highest concentration of indigenous people in the world the constitution of india 
which came into existence on 26 January 1950, prohibits discrimination on grounds of religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth and it provides the right to equality, to freedom of religion and culture and education. STs are supposedly addressed by as many as 209 articles and two special schedules of the constitution. Articles and special schedules which are protective and paternalistic. Peopling of India The people of India data recognize 4635 such ethnic communities. Many of these are, however, clusters of endogamous groups with similar traditional occupations and social status. The actual number of endogamous groups is decidedly much larger of the order of 50 to 60 thousand communities. This persistence of tribe like endogamous groups, characteristics of hunter-gatherer, shifting cultivation stage all over the world in a complex agrarian and now industrial society of India is a unique phenomenon. It seems to be a result of a peculiar Indian tradition of subjugation and isolation rather than the worldwide practice of elimination or assimilation of subordinate communities by the dominant groups. The Indian subcontinent has been populated by a series of migrants propelled by significant technological innovations outside India. Since the first major expansion of non-African Homo sapiens, probably around 65,000 years before present. The likely major migrations include Austric language speakers soon after 65,000 years pehle, probably from northeast. Dravidian speakers around 6,000 YBP from mid-east with the knowledge of cultivation of crops like wheat and domestication of animals like cattle, sheep and goats. Third, Indo-European speakers in several waves after 4000 YBP with control over horses and iron technology. Sino-Tibetan speakers in several waves after 6000 YBP knowledge of rice cultivation. A notable feature of Indian society is the persistence of thousands of tribes like endogamous groups in a complex agrarian and now industrial society. In this society, populations of dominant groups have continued to grow while those of subjugated groups may have stagnated most of the time. Humans not only transmit genes from one generation to the next, they also transmit cultural traits. Some of these are extremely conservative, being transmitted quite faithfully from parents to offspring. Foremost among these is language. Children almost invariably acquire their mother tongue from their parents and other relatives. Language and other conservative traits such as practices relating to disposal of the dead are therefore excellent devices to trace historical chain. According to S. Froja et al., languages are good markers for unraveling the ancestries and movements of people. All languages of India can be assigned to one or four major language families, Austric, Dravidian, Indo-European and Sino-Tibetan.
an excellent information base on the speakers of these language is provided by the people of india project of the anthropological survey of india this project involved assigning the entire indian population to 4635 ethnic communities and putting together detailed information on each of them through interviews of over 25000 individual informants spread over all districts of india along with compiling information from a variety of published sources this project records as the mother tongue the following languages of different families spoken by indian ethnic communities global distribution austric population southeast asia eastern and central india dravidian south and central india pakistan iran indo european europe west asia north west and east india sino tibetan china southeast asia india bordering himalayas the geographical range of distribution of austric indo european and sino tibetan speakers is extensive india harbors only a minority of languages within these families the geographical range of distribution of dravidian languages is however restricted largely to india there are only two outlying populations bruhai in balochistan elamic in iran dravidian languages might then have developed within india others are less likely to have done so for we have no evidence of any major technological innovations that could have served to carry speakers of those languages outside india tribal communities of india continue to extensively hunt and gather as well as practice low input shifting cultivation these communities are likely to have migrated to india relatively early perhaps prior to the beginning of agriculture and animal husbandry some tribal groups are other speak languages belonging to each of the four families porku munda santal khasi speak austric languages gonds oran dravidian language nagas and kuki sino tibetan languages bhils and warlis speak indo european languages but it is among austric speakers that all communities are exclusively tribals outside india also almost austric speaking communities practice very primitive technologies this suggests that austric speaking people may be the oldest inhabitants of india they may be among the first group of homo sapiens to have reached india perhaps some 50 to 65 kbp since over 98% of austric speakers today fly in the south east asia they may have entered india from north east sino tibetan speakers of india also include many tribal groups though they also include communities like maitis of manipur valley practicing advanced agriculture their concentration is along the himalayas only one community of west bengal has reached mainland india many of them report having moved into india from myanmar or china within last few generations they are therefore peripheral to the broader peopling of india the bulk of indian mainland population are dravidian and indo european speakers both include communities at all economic levels from tribal to the most advanced cultivator pastoral trader or priestly groups many of the technologically 
less advanced among these communities such as dravidian speaking kanis of kerala or indo european speaking bhils of rajasthan may have acquired these languages in more recent times through the influence of the economically more advanced mainstream societies it is however notable that while there are several dravidian speaking forest dwelling tribal communities such as gonds or orans in matrix of more advanced indo european speaking communities there are no enclaves of forest dwelling tribal indo european speakers surrounded by more advanced dravidian speaking communities the tribal indo european speakers of south india are all nomadic communities such as banjaras pardis with known history of migration from rajasthan to south india in recent centuries this is strongly suggestive of dravidians being older inhabitants of the indian subcontinent having been pushed southwards surrounded by or converted into indo european languages by later arriving indo european speakers one may then suggest the following sequences of migration of this major language speaking groups into india austric dravidian indo european if this be correct another interesting prediction follow austric languages having arrived in india earliest may show the most diversified vocabulary indo european languages the least to test this researchers have compiled words for universally used nouns such as mother water tree in several austric dravidian indo european and sino tibetan languages while well, a more objective analysis of the extent of such variation is underway it appears true that austric languages show the greatest and indo european the least divergence tribes as indigenous people aborigines are one of the most common alternative terms for tribes some scholars have also advocated the usage of the term adivasis or autonomous people of india implying them to be early settlers jaypal singh the tribal leader and the representative in the constituent assembly made a plea for retaining the term adivasi to refer to tribal people in india there have been waves of movement of population dating back to the thousands of years this being the case it is not easy to find a next divide between the original settlers and migrants the claim of tribal communities as the original people is also contested on the grounds that the traditions and the mythologies of the tribes themselves speak of movement from one place to another tribe also said to be living in close interaction with the non tribal people for centuries leading to much acculturation and even assimilation into larger hindu society the nature of interaction between tribal and non tribal communities is of peaceful coexistence rather than that of conquest and domination this mean that the historic situation of the encounter between tribal and non tribal communities in india is radically different from that of indigenous people of america australia it is hence argued that terms indigenous person is not appropriate to describe tribal people of india the counterpart to this view is that many tribal activists claim that the present tribes are descendants of 
ancestors who lived here thousands of years before Aryan invasion and demand that international instruments for rights of the indigenous should be made applicable to them. However, the term indigenous in conjunction with other related terms such as aborigines, atangtanas, etc. has also been extensively used by the scholars and administrators in their writings and reports. The term was used mainly as a mark of identification and differentiation. That is to mark out a group of people different in physical features, language, religion, custom, social organization. Even Gurhe 1963 who otherwise talks of tribes as backward Hindus and has reservation about the use of the term Adivasi refers to them as the aborigines. He writes, when the history of internal movements of people is not known, it is utterly unscientific to regard some tribe or other as original owner of the soil. It is possible to contend that even if the tribes are not aborigines of the exact area they now occupy, they are the Atangdans of India and to that extent they may be called the aborigines. The Atangdan status of the tribes in their present habitats in different parts of the country can be easily contested. The cookies in Manipur or the Lusais of Mizoram have migrated to their present areas of dominance from South China and Chin Hills only a couple of centuries back. The cookies were settled by the British in the Naga predominant areas so as to create a buffer between the Nagas and the Vaishnavite Mithis. The silo chiefs belonging to Lusai tribe were encouraged by the British to operate as labor contractors for constructing roads in the remote areas of Mizoram. The aboriginal tribes of the state who were pushed to the western borders along Tripura are now known as Tui Kuk. In Tripura, the tribal king had a, as a policy invited many Riangs and Chakmas to settle in the state so as to augment the production of cotton through jhum cultivation and ensure forward linkage to the cotton mills. Even the Bodos, believed to be a secondary formation, had migrated in waves from the Bhutan hills to settle in their present domains in Assam. The Toto tribes of Totopara on the borders of North Bengal and Bhutan is to a secondary formation as it evolved as a constellation out of a number of migrant criminal clans who were pushed out by the Bhutan kingdom. Matrilineal Kasis of Meghalaya who belong to the Mankhemar linguistic group are believed to have migrated from Kampuchea region. Denzong Bhutias, the royal Sikkimese tribe, too on record have migrated from Tibet. In the historic past, the Santals of Rajmahal Hills or Santal Parganas 
in Jharkhand had similarly migrated from the plains of Birbhum and Midnapur, West Bengal in historical times. The government of India itself refuses to give a grant indigenous status to these tribes. One of the important reason for this is that a true Brahmin and Rajput communities like the Jhonsari in Uttarakhand or the Kanura in Himachal Pradesh have been enlisted as scheduled tribes. More importantly, the term Adivasi is popularly used in North Bengal, Sikkim, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Meghalaya, Nagaland and Tripura to refer to the tea plantation laborers. The tribes like Santhal, Munda, Oran and Ho who had migrated to the region during the British colonial period. The local tribes in these states find it humiliating to identify themselves as Adivasi. The indigenous Rabha, Mech and Rajabamsi tribes or ethnic groups in North Bengal prefer to identify themselves by their own name and not as Adivasi. The Sikkimese tribesmen too identify the migrant population plantation laborers from Chota Nagpur as Adivasi and not by their specific tribal names. The Santal, Uran, Munda and Ho migrant tribes in Sundarbhans of West Bengal working as agricultural laborers or cultivating small farms are collectively referred to as Adivasis by the local Bengali settlers, a majority of whom are scheduled castes. The term Adivasi therefore remains a generic name in East and Northeast India for identifying the migrant tribal population, a laborers and a small peasants from Central India. So students, let us summarize what we have learned from this module. The bulk of Indian mainland population are Dravidian and Indo-European speakers. Both include the communities at all economic levels from tribal to the most advanced cultivators, pastoral, trader or priestly groups. Many of the technologically less advanced among us these communities such as Dravidian speaking Khanis of Kerala, Indo-European speaking Bhils of Rajasthan may have acquired these languages in more recent times through the influence of economically more advanced mainstream societies. However, the question of central importance is that whether the groups designated as tribes have been natives of India or non-tribe migrants and if they have not been the natives whether their settlement is prior to that of the arrival of the major racial groups that is Aryans. Most of the scholars are of the view that tribes could hardly make legitimate claim that they are the only natives of India. They cite observations made by scholars, however conflicting they may be in support of their position. Hutton, for example, is of the view that only the Negrito may be considered as the original inhabitant of India, though they do not have any marked presence now. He considers group belonging to the Austric, Dravidian categories, etc. as much outsiders as the Aryans. Guha is also cited for making similar observation in the context of Austric speaking people, but more authority 
sources on which such claim is questioned are the traditions of the tribe themselves as they speak. Dubey writes, it is difficult to speak of original habitants. For tribal traditions, themselves make repealed mention of migration of their ancestors. There is considerable evidence to suggest that several groups were pushed out of the areas where they were the first settled and had to seek shelter elsewhere. And there are several groups now absorbed in Hindu society which can make equally tenable claim to be original. It is said that there are tribes in India, especially in Northeast, whose settlement in the territories they inhabit today is an even later phenomenon than the settlement of many non-tribes in other parts of India. The Nagas, for example, are stated to have come to India around the middle of the first millennium BC, first to Tibet and later to the territory where they live now. The Mizos are said to have settled in the territory where they live only in the 16th century. The Kuki settlement is considered even later than the that of the Mizos. In contrast to this, the non-tribal groups like the Bengalis, Gujaratis, Odias, etc. have a much longer history of settlement than these tribes. Given this, it becomes indeed problematic to say that all tribal people in India are earlier settlers than the Aryans and therefore tribes are indigenous and non-tribes are non-indigenous. The Santals may have settled in the territory where they live now. The Santal Pargana are its adjacent areas in the beginning of the 19th century. They may have been settled there later than the Bengalis. But that in no way negates the fact that their settlement in India is prior to that of the groups commonly referred to as the Aryans, such as the Bengalis and Gujaratis. But to claim indigenous status on this ground is not so simple as one can see from the discussion that follows. Conversely, the settlement of the Mizos in India may have been a later development than those of the Gujarat is or Bengalis. But the fact remains that they are the original settlers of the place where they live now. It indeed to be mentioned that the tribal groups in India are not solely compromised of the Dravidian and Austroasiatic speaking groups. Thank you.